Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. What do you get when you combine big pharma, crack cocaine, and cars? Besides a great concept for the next Michael Bay movie, you get production line, car factory simulation. Now, as you may know, I am not the most responsible driver there is. But when I get behind the wheel of this game, I'm also not that responsible. It took me three failed factories to finally not suck at this game. Now, there aren't that many car factory simulators out there. You got Epic Car Factory, Automation, which is more about the car and less about the factory, and the very promising Car Manufacture, which I hope gets released at some point. But Production Line is a game that offers a little more than just one thing to do. In this game, you will design a factory, build cars, sell cars, manage your showroom, research new car features, research marketing strategies, implement those marketing strategies, strategies and raise brand awareness, upgrade equipment, expand your factory, listen to orders from your boss, compete with other car companies, manage your import rates, stare. You'll solve problems, fix inefficiencies, build parts in-house, build storage for your parts, paint the floor, take out a loan, go into debt, take out another loan, look at pie graphs, sacrifice a kitten, click on lists a lot, and that's pretty much everything. All right, review over. Hope you buy the game. But seriously, although this is really fun to stare at, Production Line is somehow an even deeper gaming experience than it looks. And while it doesn't have the zany humor and pop culture references like in Theme Hospital, and it doesn't have the jolly flair of Roller Coaster Tycoon, this is a car factory, not an amusement park, Production Line manages to stand on its own as a one-of-a-kind car factory simulator, and also one that is so accessible that it actually works as a gateway to simulation games. The game also happens to be more addictive than a cigarette dipped in heroin. Now, here's the real kicker. I'm not even a car person. I always wish I knew a lot about cars just to impress women. And now I can easily pretend that I do. Daisy, I, I know a lot about cars now. All right, I know all about that chassis. And I, I know a lot about powertrains. I would love to watch an advanced screening of The Rise of Skywalker with you, but I'm too busy researching air conditioning. Now, as far as the different modes go, you can play this game in sandbox mode, which has no set objective except to not fail, or you can play in scenario mode, where you're given several main objectives or quotas to meet, and once you beat those, your game converts to sandbox mode. So either way, there is sand in your future. Now, in the beginning of this game, you will start with a very basic production line of only eight slots, which will make very basic cars. And as you research new tech to make better and more advanced cars, your production line will expand and allow you to divide these eight steps into smaller and more efficient steps. This not only speeds up production, but is also mandatory if you want to install all of the hot new features into your cars. Now, some of these slots can be divided a lot, and this is where you get your first sense of how insanely deep this game will get. As soon as you start seeing messages popping up telling you that rival car companies are researching new features, now it's time to stop fucking around. You can easily see which features are becoming more popular and put those right into the research queue. But you also have to balance that with researching all of the new machinery that's required to install those features. There's already so much incentive right off the bat, and the fun part is figuring out which features you want to improve and which features you have to improve. Now, production line advertises that its gameplay mechanics are directly inspired by Henry Ford's revolutionary assembly line blueprint during his creation of the Model T, where he divided manufacturing into over 80 separate tasks and trained workers to specialize in just one, which ended up raising efficiency, lowering assembly speed, and allowing them to make lower-priced cars. But you start out with way less than 80 separate tasks, and you slowly work your way up to that by researching new abilities abilities and equipment. And if all of these categories of research feel overwhelming to you, I recommend starting with all the basic technology categories first. That way you can quickly access all the basic features that will become popular early on in the game. And then just go to the processes tab and research everything with the word specialization in it, so you can quickly unlock every single slot or assembly station. This way you'll be able to immediately install any feature that you research, and you will get 
get ahead of rival car companies in the race to include those features into your cars. But in the first 20 minutes of the game, when you have only eight different machines doing all of the assembling, the game will seem very simple. And unfortunately, some diehard Factorio fans were kind of turned off by this. Like this guy, who may have spent more time writing his review than he did playing the game, but having logged around 2,000 hours of Factorio, he calls Production Line a fast-forward simulator, where the only thing you manage is profit, and since you don't have to worry about hostile takeovers, Factorio's biters, there is virtually no way to fail. Now, I have one small problem with this guy's review. It's just one. You played the game for an hour. You don't have the slightest clue what goes on in this game. Because once you've gotten up to, I don't know, day two in the game, there is a lot of shit going on. Rival car companies constantly discover new features and you have to prioritize researching that tech along with the machinery required to produce it. The more cars you build, the more you have to adjust what you're importing and what you're building in-house. So you're constantly installing new part creation slots and the more new car designs you'll discover, the more you'll wanna just build entirely new production lines. I mean, the amount of times I've destroyed a production line and replaced it with a more advanced one that I knew would make me more money in the long run just to make better and better cars. I mean, that's what this game is all about. And trust me, there are definitely ways to fail in this game. I don't even need to play Roller Coaster Tycoon because this game was an emotional roller coaster. I went from rich to broke to filthy rich to totally bankrupt and in debt. You may not be able to tell just by looking at this, but it was quite the redemption story for Major League Auto Industries. There is even a run in background option that implies the game is supposed to be ran, not played. You know, after sitting on your ass for 2,000 hours playing Factorio, you should be running instead of playing. Now, with Production Line, it should be known that there is technically no concrete end to this game. You don't get into a rocket and shoot yourself off the planet or anything like that because this is not Factorio for the love of fucking God. But the main objective is always the same. You're trying to grow and improve the factory as much as you can, which means balancing factory efficiency with your bank account. And you may not experience all of the pitfalls that I did, but for the sake of not being useless, I'm going to impart to you three major lessons that I wish someone told me before I played this game. One is knowing how to simply install new features into your cars. First, you need to research the feature, then research and purchase the slot that builds that feature, then install the feature upgrade on that slot, then activate the upgrade on the car that you're building, and then you'll start building cars that have that feature. This process is constantly being improved in development, but it still feels like a lot of steps. Two is knowing what to do when you're losing money rapidly. First, check the showroom and make sure you don't have 150 cars that aren't selling. If you do, you need to figure out why and lower those prices quickly or do something to clear those out. If your showroom looks normal and you're still losing money, I'm gonna take a guess and say it's due to you spending too much money on importing parts. See, right now, the powertrain is the most expensive thing. Having 16 of them being imported per hour, which which isn't that many, but they're over a thousand a piece. So I'm spending $19,000 an hour on powertrains. Now that I know that, it's time to start making those in-house. And if you don't have that capability yet, you need to research that as well. So cut to later on when I'm now making powertrains in-house. And let's see how much I'm spending on importing them now. Oh, zero dollars. Well, that's kind of an improvement. The third and final thing is to know how to do what I just did, and actually shift the source of a component to be in-house. Aside from researching the ability to make the powertrain yourself, you should also research import priorities, then you go to the machine that installs the powertrain, and make sure that it always prefers a local part instead of an import, and the price will drop pretty instantly. Look at this. Ever since I started making my really souped up SUV, I'm spending $31,000 an hour to import brakes, and around $20,000 an hour to import door panels. That is absolutely gut-wrenching. I'm burning money. I'm lighting bills on fire, throwing them into the toilet, pissing on them, and then flushing the flaming piss-covered dollars down the toilet. 
It's time to pump the brakes and start pumping out the brakes. My absolute favorite part of games like this is always the research. Every single thing that you do in this game needs to be researched first. Expanding the factory, managing imports, using your own power generators. You can even research researching. Now that's just meta. Research is also extremely important in this game because this is where you really choose what kind of car company you want to be. Do you want to focus on efficiently building cheap basic cars in mass quantities, or do you want to get as much of the hot new technology as possible, making expensive luxury sex magnet machines? Now, as much as I really do love this game, there are certain things that I feel could be improved ever so slightly, but I'm also pretty confident that they will be improved. The messages from your COO are a great feature, but it would be helpful to have a log where you can scroll through past messages, or at least the last 20 of them. I could also think of a few additional things that the COO could be bugging me about. For example, maybe somebody could warn you every time you start spending more than 20 grand an hour on importing a specific component. Basically, anything that you have to regularly check in some graph or chart, I wouldn't mind being informed about. Now, the fact that there is a search feature at all in the research menu is pretty fantastic, but there are certain things that you just cannot search for because they contain a common word as something else in the list. If this could somehow be tweaked to work more like a typical find feature on your web browser or word processor, that would be incredible there could be a little more fluidity between some of the menus in the game. But that's not to say there isn't already a good amount of connection between them. For example, the game makes it very easy to upgrade machinery after you research a new upgrade or car feature you want to install. As soon as you're finished researching it, you're asked if you want to apply the upgrade to all of your slots that can use it, and it shows you how much it will cost. But it would also be great to be able to click on the technology in the research menu and jump right to its location in the build menu, without having to search for it again. This also goes for the features menu connecting to the research menu. Once again, not essential, but it would make the process a lot quicker. I have absolutely no idea how tall of an order this is, nor do I understand how stupid I sound for suggesting it. Because like most of my favorite underrated indie games, Production Line was made by one guy. This Bob Odenkirk look-alike, who looks nothing like Bob Odenkirk, Mr. Cliff Harris, aka Positech Games, aka the company behind Gratuitous Space Battles, Big Pharma, and the Democracy series. And when Cliff is not busy at work on the new Democracy 4, he's making highly informative video dev blog slash play tutorials for Production Line, dishing out tons of insight into the development process, even why he chose particular colors for the game. In the user interface, you shouldn't have 36 different variations on the color red. It's inconsistent and it's slightly jarring. There should be a scheme, there should be a designed palette so that everything looks consistent and nice. But the best is when he breaks down all the math that's coded into making the game's constantly shifting pricing mechanics. What this bit of code does is it looks at the game and it says, okay, how many Napa leather seats are you using? How many are you making? How, so therefore, how many are you importing? For the ones you're making, what components do you need? And you only need some Napa leather and some steel and then you make loads of seats. So it works out the average price to you right now of making that, uh, of, providing that component. He also provides some seriously helpful tips for playing the game. He doesn't have to do any of this, but if you're an idiot like me, it does help. There's also the fact that this guy listens to almost every suggestion that people give him and quickly, and I mean quickly, implements those changes into the game. I've noticed so many little improvements popping up just while I captured the footage for this video. A lot of people compared Production Line to Factorio, which I really don't think is fair. Although I will say that the feeling I get when I play this is very similar to what I felt when I played Factorio, where you just know you're in the hands of a developer who truly loves the details and clearly took their time to create an exceptionally functional and unique sandbox world. Unfortunately, women have not been that impressed with my knowledge of the cars in this game. But that has not stopped me from telling them about it when I approach them in bars. There is so much to be said 
excited about this game. It's really hard to whittle it all down. I could easily see someone fitting hours into just talking about it, let alone playing it. But be warned that this is a highly addictive product. Cliff Harris is truly one of the great drug manufacturers of our time, up there with Walter White and Albert Hoffman. In fact, I don't think I can exist on the same planet as this game. It just might ruin my life. I think you all know where this is going. So until next time...